My name is Derek. Uh, I'm a UX designer with Haptel Ghana. So as part of my job, I get to design across various industries like payments, um, SMS, um, e-commerce, and various tools that our businesses need to do business with. Um, so prior to being a designer, I had um, experience in public health. So I was public health officer. And what I realized with the provision of the needs of people is that for people to really accept the type of solution that you are providing, you need to properly tailor it towards them. So um, how does this um, tie into designing of a product? Um, before a product can have much success in the market or before you can properly break into um, a target market and win them over, you need to properly build the product for them. You need to have them in mind when building a product, when designing, when thinking about the product. And this ties into the reason why a lot of um, foreign brands come into the African market and most of them struggle to expand, most of them struggle to scale or move over to a new country in Africa. That's because a lot of them, they don't really build for the average African. So this um, is very important as in building for a specific demographic because for the people to accept you, they need to feel that you are actually speaking to them. So one store, um, that falls into this category as UK brand store. So UK brand store came to Ghana in 2019, and they came into the market with lots of hype, with lots of influencer marketing. They were at events, they were bringing people for interviews and whatnot. So after a while, they had to close down. That was because patronage was not as much as they expected. They really didn't um, they really didn't think about the demographic that would most likely like their product, and they were only appealing to just a few. Most of them that um, were following them around were just doing that because they were getting some money from um, advertisement. So when they were leaving, they had to do a 60% of every item. And still, people didn't believe it because the items were so expensive that people really didn't believe that they could actually do a 60% off. So yeah, some, from this example, you see that firstly, the market is a bit different. So the fact that the business worked in India or China or another country doesn't mean that when you bring it to Ghana, it's, or when you bring it to anywhere in Africa, it's going to expand or it's going to work properly. So the market is very cash heavy, right? People determine how much they can afford pay how or determine whether they can afford a product or not, pay how much they can get access to at that moment in time. Payment plans are not really a thing in a lot of the African markets. So people really want to be able to afford something cash uh, before they actually get involved with it. Another thing is people value trust more than hype. So that's the another reason why review sites and then People really don't generally don't read reviews in this part of the market. Um, they would rather call a friend to ask about the product than spend time reading a review. So if you want to get people to like your market, like your product, especially in a new market, the first thing um, you'd have to think about is market alignment, right? So do people actually need the product that you are building? The fact that you feel it's an important product doesn't necessarily mean that people are going to think the same way, right? So if you have a lot of money to throw around and then you don't have market alignment for your product, people are not going to walk to you. People are not going to jump at your product because you are not speaking to them, even though you look like a luxury brand or something that um, could work. People are not going to come to you because you are not aligned with their goals or with their problems that they're trying to solve. Another thing will be infrastructure or feasibility. So the idea or the solution that you are bringing into the market, does the current infrastructure support it? So if you are bringing 5G into the African market, a lot of the African market do not support 5G. So you are going to lose a lot of money in that sense. So you need to look at the various infrastructure or the platforms or the things that have been put in place before you actually start building your solution. Otherwise, when you get into the market, you are not going to get any support from the infrastructure that is currently there. So does the current infrastructure support it? If yes, build upon it. If no, then you need to make putting more efforts or at least make the effort to build whatever infrastructure that you need. Another thing to look for or to look out for when entering a new market, that's learning from the locals, right? So 
the local products or the local competitors have found a way to solve the problem that you are trying to solve, even within the constraints that are available. Some have been able to make money even within the constraints that are available. So if you want to properly fit in the market or you want to break into the market, the best you could do is learn what they are doing and improve upon the parts that you feel can be improved upon. And gradually, you win over the market that you are trying to get into. So another thing to note is that you cannot grow faster than the environment, right? So the environment can only allow you to grow as much as it itself has grown. So if you want to grow in a particular market, in this case, the African market, you need to contribute to the growth of the environment. So if the environment grows to an extent, your product is also going to grow. If the internet infrastructure now supports 5G, your products can also work in that particular context. If you are allowing more payment options or more payment processes, your business is going to also grow in that aspect. And then businesses die when they spend faster than they learn, right? So if you get into a new market and you encounter various constraints, the best thing to do is not to throw money at it. The best thing to do is to learn how to work around the various constraints that you are working with. And this happens a lot in a lot of the African um, jurisdiction, African context, where business or government regulations have been the downfall of a lot of countries. That was because instead of trying to learn and solve the problem or go around the problem, a lot of the businesses try throwing money around and then this really pisses off some of the authorities. And at the end of the day, it signifies or it becomes the end of your business in Africa. So how do we win over the African markets, right? We've talked about how to get into uh, new markets, how to build that trust. So how do you get into the African markets? So the first thing that you need to do is to speak the language of the market, right? You need to understand and respect the users. Um, you need to understand how they behave. So a lot of the users have particular behaviors that have grown from the time they were children to now. Their purchasing behavior has been influenced by um, their environment, their um, what they believe to be the best solution has been uh, influenced by how much they could afford at that moment. Being, um, their reason why they go for that solution has been influenced by maybe their parents, their friends, and whatnot. There are schools of thought in parts of Africa that um, secondhand products are actually stronger than um, brand new products. That's a school of thought that. When you think about it, it might not make sense, but people have <laughs> tried and tested it for over years and they believe it to be true. So these are some things that you need to understand um, about the average user, and then you need to build towards that. So a company that is doing this very well is Transient Holdings. So Transient Holdings owns Techno, Infinix, Orimo, and ITIL. So this company, Transient Holdings, owns about 40% market share in the mobile food and accessories markets in Ghana. And they own a lot, they own it in Africa and even across various uh, Asian countries. So how do they become, uh, how do they become popular or how do they actually earn a lot of these markets? The first thing they did was they provided dual sims. So with dual sims, an average consumer can actually have uh, multiple businesses running on the same device. So with as little as 70 Ghana cities or a little over $10, you can get a phone with a dual SIM. You can get a phone with a 5,000 milliampere hour battery, which is higher than the iPhone 13. So they've been able to do this at a very affordable price. They've been able to do this with a battery that lasts very long, which is exactly what people need in a market that suffers a lot of electricity issues. So they also offer premium devices for people who want to show off a bit or people who can actually afford it whilst keeping all these um, qualities that people would love while keeping the dual same quality, whilst having an affordable price point, whilst having proper battery or battery that could last long. Another thing that they are doing currently that is like really pushing them a lot is that they understand what the market needs and they are delivering just that. So they are not going over the top to bring superficial characteristics that people might just allow for only two days and then get fed up, but they are delivering what the market needs, which is what, which is an affordable, a functional and an easy to set up device. 
So when you get a phone from Transient Holdings, you can easily set it up within 10 minutes without help from anyone. And this is because the average user needs a phone that is quick, something that can, they can use as quickly as possible. And Transient Holdings has been doing this for years, and they've been able to take over the markets with this. Another thing that uh, we need to take advantage of if you are building or you want to win over the African market is to make sure you use available infrastructure to your advantage. So this might be true for a lot of organization, but then the nuance of or, or the small difference that you can get in the African market is if mobility is an issue for you, then what you can do is to lease resources. So a company called Gojek or Gozem. So Gozem actually started as um, a transportation company and they started leasing motorbikes and vehicles and um, tricycles to their prospective drivers or riders. Within a short period of time, they had about 1,500 vehicles to work for them. And these people were working under a lease model. So they are now extra motivated to work the extra motivated to end the cars that they've actually started working with. And then at the end of the day, Gozem is making profits. The riders are making their own money and then everyone is happy. So if mobility is your issue, you could just make an announcement that you are leasing on vehicles to drivers, to riders, to come and work for you, get your business on. If payments is your problem, you could integrate local payment options we have various companies that have publicly accessible APIs that you can integrate into your product. So the various infrastructure that's available are good enough to actually build upon. So if you feel, like I said earlier, that the infrastructure is not good enough for you, then you can build upon what you already have. Another group of people who are making good use of this are the telecommunications company. So they introduced this thing called mobile money, where you could have a mini bank on your phone. So everyone who has a phone has registered it with their SIM with their ID card. And then once you have your ID card, that means they can identify you wherever you are and with any transaction that you do. So what these telcos did was allow people to use their SIM cards as a bank. You could receive money, you could send money, you could even sometimes invest. So a companies that did this include MTM, Vodafone, and Airtel and the rest. So if you want to send money, like we have in the image here, you can just go to an email agent, to give the money to them, and then they can send the money on your behalf. You can also do that on your phone. You don't really need internet for that. You can do all that offline, and it works very well. So the companies that started this mobile money model are now transacting even more than certain banks in a lot of the parts of Africa. That means they really saw what was available, they worked around it, they built upon it, and now they are even transacting more than a lot of banks. So if you are able to take advantage of whatever resources are available, and then instead of trying to throw money at them all the time, you are going to become a dominant force. We know this from experience. We know this from MTN. We know this from OSEM. We know this from all the African companies that have done this all over the years. Then. The foundation is already in place, which is very true. The market has existed for a lot of years. The market is not so young. The market has existed for a lot of years. People have tried various solutions. People have made money from a lot of industries, whether it be it's construction, financial systems, various SMS and all that. People have made money from all these uh, markets, even though we have all these constraints still in place. So, that's why it's important to learn from local businesses because they've seen it, they've worked around all the constraints that are available. Another thing to note is that we need to modify your processes and not necessarily limit the access. So when you take uh, products like PayPal, Revolut and the rest, they have limited access when it comes to Africa, right? So instead of limiting the access and then forgoing this huge market that's uh, can be of an advantage to you, you can just modify the processes. So if you need to accept payments, companies like um, Haptel, Flutterwave, Paystack, they can easily integrate local payment options across the entire Africa into your product. So if payment is your issue, you can just integrate some of these into your product. If delivery is your issue, we've seen some Amazon 
um, shops that are Amazon sellers not delivering to some parts of Africa. Um, if delivery is an issue, RMX, DHL deliver within five days. So yes, it takes a lot of extra effort, which is very true. But then we have seen from experience, we have seen from the examples from MTN, from Gozem, from PayPal to Paystack, and the rest that if you put in the extra effort to actually speak to the local consumers, it's going to reap a lot of benefits for you in the long run. So in the long run, like I said, products that do this get users to trust them more. Imagine you get into the smallest part of the African market and then people can transact on your platform using their local payments. People are going to prove to you a lot. This leads to market dominance, which is very true. When we see examples of companies that started this earlier than others, you see those who started earlier have more dominance in the market. Today, if you speak of mobile money, the first thing that gets into people's mind is MTN. That's because they brought, they started their mobile money model, and then they've been able to carve that idea into people's mind that, okay, once I hear MTN, once I hear mobile money, it's MTN. But then it might be other networks. It might be Airtel, it might be Vodafone, and whatnot. So it's all about trust, really. It's all about trust. Before people would jump at your products, they have to really trust that you are speaking to their particular need before people jump at your product, they need to understand that you and empathize with them and you are not just throwing a solution at them because you feel it's going to work. So a testimony of a friend sometimes hold more weight than many five-star reviews, which is very true because like I said earlier, a lot of review sites, really people don't really visit them in this part of the market. Um, people really don't take five-star reviews as uh, as law or they take it as fact. Um, it's just, okay, this, okay, you've got 25 five-star reviews, so cool. But then if a friend tells me about you, I'm much more likely to speak to or to speak to you about your product or patronize your product. So how do we build trust, really? So this whole presentation has basically been about building trust with the African market so that they come towards your product. So how do you build trust? The first thing to note is the more foreign your product acts, the lesser the trust they are going to have towards you. So if it's a digital product that you are offering, at least have multiple device, have multiple languages accepted. Um, if you are going to, if it's possible, include an offline access to your product because people have internet issues, people have electricity issues. So if you can have an offline access to your products, it's going to blow people's mind because at the end of the day, people still want to use good products. It's just the constraints that are in place that are preventing a lot of people from actually embracing these products. So if you could make your products more accessible, you realize that people will jump at it easily. Then the average African values respect over anything else. People can forgo a restaurant because they went there and they were disrespected, not because the food is... Um, terrible or the food is uh, bad or anything, but just because they felt they were disrespected. So treat everyone with equal respect. The third thing is cultural understanding, which is very true. Companies that um, expanded to China and the rest, when they took on the family, the love, the um, companionship model, they succeeded. <clears throat> so similar thing with Africa, right? If let's assume your company deals with um, funeral products right and then your colors or your brand colors are yellow and blue and red which are perceived to be happy colors people are going to like really be suspicious of you like i don't to mock uh, my <laughs> death the death of my uh, relative or so you need to understand the cultural uh, perspective of issues if you are going to solve uh, problems in that particular domain so be it colors uh, be it how you speak to the adults in the society, be it how you interact with the kids. So um, the funeral colors are like I, the example I gave earlier, the funeral colors are normally black. So if that's what you're trying to do, make sure you're aligned with that. If you are trying to build a product, make sure you take into consideration the local holidays. If you are going to have uh, local talent on your team, make sure you respect them with the various holidays that uh, might be uh, at their advantage, at their disposal. So basically understanding the culture that your African uh, market is in or the African and um, the average African market is in, um, 
will go a long way in pushing you in that particular field. So what are we talking about? Um, maybe you join at the middle. So firstly, you need to speak the language of users, right? If you want to let the users jump at your product, speak the language of users, what do they need? They need an affordable product. They need a product that can work offline. They need a product that they can use even if there are electricity issues. If that's what they need, give them exactly what they need and not glamorize anything. Gain the trust of the user slowly, which is very important. If a user feels or if people feel that you are throwing a solution at them and you're trying to sell them something at all costs, they are going to get suspicious of you. Another thing is to learn from local competitors. So like people have been able to thrive in the market, even though we have a lot of constraints in the market, people have been able to thrive in it. So how much more you who has probably deeper pockets than those who have thrived in the market. So learn from what you are doing, build up on what you are doing, and you can better serve the markets that you want to penetrate. Then another thing is the groundwork has already been done. So the market have existed for a lot of years. A lot of the things that you need to scale your business are already existing. So take advantage of whatever is there. If it's mobile money integration into your product, do it. If you need to integrate local payment cards, into your product to do it. If you need to work with local um, influencers to use their marketing channel to push your business, do it. If you need to speak to local radio stations, do it. You don't really need to reinvent the wheel when it comes to building or improving upon the infrastructure that um, people have. Another thing is if you act like you don't belong, you're not going to belong, basically. If your product supports maybe only English, People who really need your product, but then do not speak that language, are not going to use your product. They're going to think that's okay. You do not belong for them or you build for them. Um, if keyboard, Transion Holdings has keyboards in Chi, in Aka, in Ever, in Fancy, and in other local languages that exist in the, in the market. So act like you belong. If you need people on site, if you need local talent or local people on the ground to help you scale the product to, it's very necessary because when people feel that you are on the ground with them, if people feel that you have local presence, they are also going to lean more towards you because they see that if they have an issue, there's somebody closer to them that they can report the issue to. Instead of maybe um, in Ghana like this, we don't have it all. Even though if you have maybe a, an iPhone, repair that you need sometimes you, pr you probably have to ship the iphone elsewhere to get a correct repair so if you need local talent make sure you have local presence people are going to jump at your products so at the end of the day getting the african market to jump on your products is basically trust is basically having people to lean on is basically having people to understand that they can give their money to you and in return they get value for whatever money that they are giving to you so yeah in my experience people who do this end up expanding and up become market dominant. so thank you for listening uh, my name is derek you can follow me and yeah just thank you for listening yeah, thank you <laughs>